It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> I think I'll start every one of them and sing, Terry. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, so, because it seems like I'm doing that by accident, but still, <laughs> it's a beautiful day. We're here, um, Cosmic Mama and Terry Smith, and we have Sybil with us today. I'm really excited to be able to share time with you and to just talk about some of the exciting uh, paintings that you've been doing and what... Uh, there's some things that you wanted to discuss too, maybe about the, the 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 law and sovereignty, but also even just the SSP community in general. And um, Terry, I don't know if you could help me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, Sybil. Your paintings are um, amazing, and. Um, so why don't you why don't you just tell us how you got into doing the you know that you started working and doing portraits of people in the program and and that we see the beautiful painting that you've done behind you so it's obviously part of your your path so what inspires you when you start to how did you get inspired to do some of these things and and so and then from there you know like I'm sure that you've had varying experiences so they they all of those things become an aspect of who you are and then you you're bringing them forward through your artwork so uh just tell us your a little okay. bit how, you, how you're getting start how got started with all of that okay so i always had a, a talent for painting um you know since i was really little or drawing you know i just was into it um i'd always make piles of scraps when i was a kid um when I was, you know, I'd just be making stuff. And then um, in high school, I continued having people would remark that I seemed to have a knack for it. And then I went to art school. I was very fortunate that I got to go to Paris for three years. So um, and it was a four year art program, like normal art school and um, American school, though. But but um, it was so much fun and I had great teachers and they pushed us really hard to um, learn to be honest. And that means to, um, you draw the line and then you might need to erase it when you find it that it's wrong. So um, I think that's why my work portraits have an intensity sometimes because I get really mad when, when I am not seeing that likeness yet. And, um, and then sometimes I catch it really fast. So some of my drawings are really um, quick and easy. Um, so there's that. And um, But the, the other thing is um, getting a degree in art. All I wanted to do was to be an artist. And this was back in 1989, I graduated. <clears throat> and I just wanted to do art for art's sake, which is not like political art and stuff. And I've always had a thing like, oh, my God, I can't do political art or whatever it's called. Or, and, But in um, 2007 was when I read Kathy O'Brien's Transformation of America and Bryce Taylor's um, Thanks for the Memories, both of those. And, you know, there's SRA in there and and, and horrible things and MK Ultra and I just, you know, it changed my world. Um, every everything's different. It's not really a safe world. Um, so then, I, I mean, over the years, I kept researching, and then um, in tw to 2022, I got to go to Journey to Truth's uh, Secret Space Program conference, which was so cool. It was a great conference, and and then I, um, I got to meet. Well, I, I asked Tony on the last day, hey, can I can I draw you? So on the day we were all leaving, I um, did a, started a portrait of him, but I finished it using a, that one's, um, that's them, yeah, Journey to Truth. And then there's one of Tony. Um, Let me see. It's probably on my Substack. I don't know if you have it. Um, I don't know if you have it. Uh, but anyway, and then I, I took, yeah, that one. I took a picture of him 
to finish it um, at home because I wasn't it wasn't good enough after an, like an hour or even maybe I only worked a half an hour just with him. But so I did a few. I did uh, Rebecca Rose and Daryl James and um, James Rink. That's who I got had time to do at that conference. And then I just, I didn't know what I was gonna do with these. I thought, well, maybe I could make NFTs cause I, I made them on my um, iPad. And then last March, I went to visit my old friend from college. Who's always really, uh, she's just hip to everything. And she said, I should start a Substack. So I have always loved to write. And um, I think, I mean, I'm trying to write in a way about all these victims of, of the SSP that it's um, kind of easy to read and maybe a little, even funny sometimes. I have a little, at least it makes me laugh sometimes. Um, I was hoping, and then, I mean, I really don't know if this is a, that good of an idea, <laughs> but um, I just want to, I'm mad that they're taking people as children and abusing them and then making me sign these huge contracts and and uh, I just wanted to do something. It's I don't even know if I am spreading any awareness because I'm just preaching to the choir, maybe. But but um, that's why I wanted to to um, kind of study the SSP, the people. And I know I put a few other things like Journey to Truth. Well, it turns out Tyler maybe what went to space. He says now, uh, but he didn't know that in 2022, and. Um, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, what was I just saying? Can you help me? Uh, oh, oh well, you were saying how your intention was to connect by sharing about the victims or the participants in SSP. Right. And, I yeah. just, um, I worry sometimes, I mean, I might be just preaching to the choir, but um, another thing is everyone I knew from all my art studies and other places I've been in my life, my former friends in New York that I'm still friends with on Facebook and friends here, everyone hated, you know, Mr. T. And um, I just, I could not support um, the Scorpion Queen, That's, this one, woman um uh, iliana called her that i thought that was funny back in 2016 so i i i was the only one the only like arty person that was um not outraged uh, i mean that was you know what i mean and so i wanted to just be an artist that isn't like everyone else i'm not just following the liberal um train um because it's not liberal anymore it's it's getting it's getting um, really scary and, and controlling and they want to abolish private property, all kinds of things. Okay, so that's that's probably about, hope that makes sense. It does, it does. So you, you're, you're quite, um, quite guided where it seems unintentional, but maybe meeting up with your purpose on this different level. And I know that probably makes it difficult to explain because it's like you have a mission, you're on a mission. You you don't know the scope of it until it unfolds. And so you go to art school and you learn the principles, but it's equipping you for something, you know, it's kind of like what we're doing. Why are we here, right? We went and learned a lot of things. We were just discussing this, how all the way back in the 90s, I was doing this and back in the, Terry was doing this, but each one of these things that we're doing is um, collecting a tool or instrument that we can use in the future for, for further connecting people on the planet to help them understand more about this community and, and, and our, Yes. Truth. Uh, Exposing to the truth, basically. You know. That, that's true. I was, um, I just thought of uh, another good example for me is um, how Dr. Sala um, 
he was already a tenured professor in, in political science. I forgot what he called his form of political science, but um, then everything changed in 2001 when he saw all those uh, testimonies of people that have seen UFOs and alien bodies and, and all that stuff. So he just was like, all right, boom, changing his tack. And I feel like that's what I did also. Um, right. It kind of, it, it kind of, um, it's as if you had all your crayons on the floor and then all of a sudden this new thing lines it all up and it's like, ah, now I know what to do with this. And so it, it makes plenty of sense. Um, over time. So you first went to that first conference in 2022, you said? Yes. And then and things just kind of line up and then you begin to meet people and be inspired by them. And it, yep. it like a light goes off. And so I got to meet you last year. I'm not, I think I'm, I know I met you at Journey to the Truth, but I think I did see you again at the G6. G6. Yeah. I remember I met you at the and you had your beautiful son with you. And that was so, he's very gifted. And it's, it's watching this woman with a really gifted child who I, I'm really looking forward to see one day what actually happens with him. Like, like what he's able to express to us as he's growing. Same thing with my son, because my son is on the spectrum. And uh, it's it's watching them grow and giving them the space to grow. But what I noticed about you was that you're a very gentle and patient woman that is allowing, you know, a lot of times we want the kids to just sit down, be quiet, you know, like that's our old training. But we're getting to this new level where we're starting to understand that children are gifted and talented and they have these different uh, things that they're going to be able to teach us, but we have to give them room. And so how have you been finding the ability to do that? How have you, how, because it's difficult because we would like kids to sit and be quiet and stay, you know, but it's hard to parent in this scope of how much space do I give them and how do I let them flourish and what instruments and tools do I give them? And so I see you doing it. And I know, did you want to even share? Yeah, sure. For parents. Um, when it comes to that differently, what do they call it? Neurodivergent children. Yeah. Um, I'm okay. He's, I'm home. We are homeschooling him um, because of the education system. I don't trust it. And um, so I, I, I'm just a permissive parent. Some people might find fault with that. I was like that with my older son too, when he was younger. Um, but at the same time, sometimes I'm kind of firm, like, no, we're doing this. We're learning this now. And one example of that is uh, we're doing ro roller skating, figure roller, which is um, actually, it's a, this sport is so amazing. It's just like ice skating. And yet it's kind of dying in America. It's really sad. I'm, I'm hoping that there will be a renaissance of it because I mean, it's full of, there's so many levels and skills to learn. But anyway, um, so he, he wasn't that excited that we were going to practice <laughs> two and a half hours twice a week. And then I was like, um, sorry, we're, we're doing this. <laughs> and um, because one problem I do have is he likes to be on his iPad um, a lot. And so I just need to get him away from that sometimes. And so the one athletic thing, and I happened to pick one that I already liked. I was already into roller skating, but then we found our, a cool coach. So that's how that happened. But, but anyway, now he's getting good and now he likes it. Now he's excited about it. And I think it, um, it's like that being a parent sometimes, even like, you know, you need to try this piece of food right here, uh, even if it looks scary. <laughs> and then they wind up loving it, or at least maybe they'll hate it, but at least they tried it, you know? So. You know, it's interesting, too, because I think my son had some things where he do at the at daycare that he wouldn't do at home. Some things he'd eat with me that he or eat with his dad and he wouldn't eat with me. They call it like um, they, they don't transfer activities and stuff. So I learned a long time about this thing called being parent deaf, like 
when the kid is with you, they become parent deaf. But when they go to a whole nother person, it's like a whole new child. Sometimes you're like, what? You got him to do what? <laughs> you know? Um, I know, too, I used to let my son play chess. And um, man, he is he was, really is he good at that? He's extremely good at it. But we had even Olympic coaches, but they felt like they weren't making enough money because they didn't have enough students. So he's had several coaches quit. And so it caused him not to want to be on the chess club anymore. It, it like affected him that he kind of just gave up. But definitely this thing, we had a discussion the other day about staying too much on the computer. So, you know, Terry knows we, we've done um, ATV rides. Now, tomorrow we're going to do monster truck. I'm like, anything to like try to drag this child outside. He doesn't even care about going to Universal Studios. He doesn't care about going to the arcade. It's amazing. Um, but I'm I'm just... So, uh, any tips you got about dragging them outside and making... <laughs> it? Well, I don't... Um, people are slightly on the spectrum. It's so different. I don't know. I mean, but... But... Uh... Hopefully he'll find something that he likes. It sounds like, like he still poker. likes chess. I wonder if he could play like in New York in Washington Square Park. There are people playing chess outside all the time. Yeah. Um, I wonder because I'm sure he still has those skills. That's what he did. He met some old men in the park or if some old guy sees him on the porch playing in the old neighborhood that we lived in, people would stop just to play chess with him. So, yeah, he that that was that really did it. He could play up to three people at once. <gasps> wow. He could play three boards at once. He's very talented. He even had one of those things where you could play three people at once, like a, a board that's divided that way. His mind. Oh my goodness. A whole different way. He said, mom. Has, has he been rated yet? Like 16, hmm? 1700? Has he been? You don't have to tell me. Never mind. That's not. Nah. He's probably way up there though, because I was just playing with my son and you know, getting him teaching him and um then i would do something really stupid like lose a major piece when i thought i just didn't didn't see it you know <laughs> but sometimes i'm good but i i'll still yeah. do something stupid yeah he can tell you he could go after the game and say remember when you did this and you did this and, he, and i'm thinking how do you remember all the moves in your head he, he could just tell you so that's incredible that's a real skill um interesting maybe yeah. that that spectrum part of him makes him really concentrate. Do you think so? The it's, it's definitely, it's different. It's not where my brain is. So, cause <laughs> so with your son, he hasn't absorbed your artistic talent. Has he? Well, not okay. He doesn't have the, a little bit. Yeah. A little, sometimes if I'm doodling and it's not um, from life, you know, um, like maybe I'll, I'll doodle a building. And it'll be 3D. He got. He was like, "Wow, how, how do you do that?" And then he kind of started doing his own, doing his own versions of those that were really, really cool, different, but still. I could tell he was studying what I what I did, and then also with his digital, um, you know, knowledge, well, know how. Yeah. He's um, he can make really cool art on on the iPad on Procreate. Yeah. And he, he discovers all the crazy, it took me a while to discover all the weird part. Like um, shortcuts in a way. Not, yeah. And um, the, the, there's um, tools where there's shapes that I just didn't ever discover because I was just using the, the normal paintbrush. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, now I, now I know how to do that more. <laughs> um, and, oh, oh my gosh. And then he, when he was six, six or seven, seven, I think, maybe, no, eight, he had um, a little TikTok channel and it was so good. He'd do the, the funniest things. Um, like when he put a fork in his mouth with a mandarin orange on it, and then he'd put his hands like, and hide the fork. So it looks oh. like the orange is floating. And he just does creative things and he knows how to edit. Um, he's a really good, video editor already so is that what he did with the banana yeah <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out how he had this banana suspended in the air yeah <laughs> <laughs> he made it look like he was just he's just magic yeah um yeah that was so Holy funny cow. and then that banana got all mushed and then he 
put it on the stairs. I'll just explain for people who weren't at that party. This was at last year's conference, Journey to Truth. There was a party at some people's Airbnb. And yeah, Obi, I took a picture of him with this floating banana. And then he, it got mushed and then he peeled it. And there was a spiral staircase and he put it on the stairs. And um, <laughs> I got a fun. Actually, Tony was downstairs right then. And we and he was like, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Because he was going to trip the people coming down. But I took oh it off. God. Don't worry. <laughs> how, 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 old, how old is your son, Sybil? Well, he's 10 now. Oh, okay. So oh, he's still he's still a young, young boy. Yeah, he's got about one and a half years left of the childhood before it really switches, you know? Yeah. At least this that's... This is a banana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was funny. Now I know the secret. Yeah, I'm but that's a cool ball. trick, and you, you can barely tell. I could not tell at all. I thought maybe someone dropped it from, and then you stopped it, you know, like catch the photo while it's dropping. I could not figure that out. Okay. I'm glad <laughs> that was a fun mystery. Maybe other people are like, what? <laughs> well, they'll only know if they saw this, so that's interesting. Yeah. So, um, what was really great about that last year too was that the kids were just able to flow and and mix in with everybody it was you know all ages and no one feeling left out um my son got to hang out with our friend um jamie um his daughter is the same age and they just yeah. hung out the whole time and that place is pretty safe and we we let them sit in the main room there while we were in the conferences and yeah, I'd, I'd run back and forth a little bit, but, um, oh, but trust, yeah. we were all watching because Randy was there and Tesla was there. And so we were all watching yeah, Tesla. each other and I had a great time with Tesla. So more about your sub stack. Okay. What is it that you're doing with your articles? Your, your it's lighthearted articles and. Well, are you lighthearted about a, awful subjects like right um, and <laughs> um, but i know people appreciate they appreciate the artwork like so especially... I just, i'm just gonna ask you so when you do these articles have you um like the people that you're writing them about have you sort of like interviewed them to just sort of get their information um, no, um and putting forward the picture is it sort of like are you kind of creating a, um, a history around them or um, um, information no, well, they've shared? I met, I met Art Keem briefly last last conference and I he, I said, can I do a portrait of you? He was like, you want to do a portrait? And, and I was like, yeah, please. And so I just took a couple of photos and one of them was pretty neat photo, that one. And, but that, uh, I drew the photo, that's not the photo. Um, so I, I like I like how that one turned out and I like the way the piano looks kind of um, melting or I don't know, like it's bent a little bit. Um, and I did not interview him. Um, you can do that on Substack and I kind of want to add some interviews back into some of these people if they would be willing to um, do interviews with me because I have I, I've watched a ton of videos. That's I grabbed pieces of their stories, just pieces of their stories. My 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 goal was to make a summary of of like maybe seventy people that were in the SSP, so that people will be like, "Holy crap! I think that it's real," you know. And there, unfortunately, there's infighting in the community, um, <clears throat> and there are certain people that don't talk to other people. And that it all kind of irritates me. And, and that's why I wanted to just um, Create uh, an anthology. focus on everyone that I think is telling the truth. And regardless of what they thought about everything that's going on right now, you know, if they, if they were abused when they were a child and taken um, against, the, you know, tricked, basically, they're tricked and taken and, um, made to undergo like torture and hell 
especially in Montauk, you know? Right. So, um, yeah, and then, anyway, okay. So I you love, wanted to create love, an anthology, basically, a yeah. complete anthology of the people. It's almost like creating a yearbook, too, to, yeah. to say we existed and that this is what happened and this is the true accounts. It oh. would be nice if people got together that way and worked more instead of saying, well, I don't like this person and discounting everything versus right. just let's be complete. Because I think there's a mission to create that dissension amongst us because oh, why, are, why are we telling separate stories, you know? Um, yeah. I do want to ask Terry, because we're just going to stick to this little section of the infighting and, and having a complete anthology and ask Terry, like your thoughts that you would share on why this is happening and, and what we can do about it. And then we can move forward to maybe just talk more about your opinions of SSP in general. Okay, we just so, trying to get blessings in the middle. So I just say, Terry, you want me, you Terry, are, Terry, you want, you're going to yeah. say, yeah, well, no, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to, um, I, the, the SSP thing is, um, I, I've been following it, but not for a particularly long period of time. So what I see from it is that people have had different experiences and I think that um, other people are challenged by what one person's experience is and, and another person's experience, but they're all having had different, different um, places, different postings, different things that they've done. And it's not a competition about who's right. And, and it's their experience. And I think part of the, the thing is to realize that we are all going to have, um, you know, we're going to see something and we're going to see it from a different point of view. And one is not right and one is not wrong. It's just that, that their experience, how they perceive it, is going to be slightly different. So I think we have to be in that neutral position and just understand that um, there's different personalities here and um, different ways of viewing what happened. And, and so to get on the bandwagon and say, oh, this person is wrong and, and whatever, it, it's like we have to step back and come from a higher perspective and see that okay, we don't know, we don't know all the parameters that are s surrounding each person's experience. Um, and, and not only that, you know, if they were at 20 and back, what happened when they came back? What's, ex what's that experience and, and what their memories are is just partially their memories. Um, so we don't know the trauma that they've totally experienced. They can share part of it, but we don't know everything that they have have uh, experience so we have to be tolerant right so we're saying that to agree with you Sybil because you're coming from a place of the flat line of giving each person their voice and honoring each person with your art and not picking and choosing who you like and who you don't like and saying I respect their story. So you're coming from a higher level when you're doing your articles and your artwork, because I noticed that you don't, you don't take sides. You just come from the higher perspective of honoring each person with your artwork. So I think that's, it shows that you've graduated, you know, in your heart to come to a higher perspective and that you, you know, that you do that. So I like to think of it as um, humans want to be so logical. So anytime there's a contradiction and this person said this and this person said this, um, maybe, okay, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm trying to report, you know, aspects of each pe person's story, how they remembered it. And I've even said before that um, I know that sometimes there's contradictions and um, I'm not worried about it. I'm, I'm, it's okay to be illogical sometimes because nobody knows the whole truth um and it's gonna there's also like so many similarities and that's what i um focus on 
you know, you know why I think that's possible because Terry and I were noticing too, when you've been a parent, you learn to be flexible. Yeah. Right. You're because with kids, you can't say you are wrong. You know, like you can't (laughs) beat it out of them. Right. They have a perspective and you have to, you learn to humble yourself with your thinking to honor the perspective of your child. Not that you are obedient to your child. You still know what you know, but then you're also able to be taught things by your child. And so I think it leads us into having a different perspective and being flexible with people, respecting people where they're at, and also just um, not being so harsh in judgment with people. Because and kids, yeah, and because people. We've, we've had to obey our children as well. We've had to be humbled by our children because I, you know, I guess we were talking about the stages of life. How uh, when you hit your your twenties to thirties, and now you got your own voice, and you're strong in your voice and your perspective, and you kind of think you know it all. But then you go through that phase when you become taking care of your parents and taking care of your children. Now you're like you're you're having to learn to be more compassionate. And so as parents, especially we're all parents of not different neurodivergent children. We all have special children. They're special in some way that it teaches us to respect other people's space and not always stand in judgment that we are the know all end all. When it comes to that, I think it's a humbling experience. Parenthood. I mean, that's another reason, too, when I see people say, well, I'm just a mom because I'm not a. I'm not SSP or I'm not psychic or I'm not, it's like, no, no, no. You have an actual wonderful job in this community because you're raising children who are going to be the future leaders and express themselves one day. So it's not a, it's not a menial task to be a parent, you know? Uh, no, not at all. It's, um, and I feel like it's a way of growing up. It's, um, once I had my first baby, I was 33. I waited too long. I, I should have I started earlier, you know? Yeah. Once I was like, oh my God, why didn't I start earlier? This is awesome. Look at this sweet baby, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and they're also, they're so wise when they're newborn. They're connected to God. You can see it. It's it's like they are they are connected in a way that we have lost because we get socialized and, um, you know, and then... Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I and and then all throughout childhood, little you trade one thing and lose another thing, get a new skill, wow. and then you lose. What is this? When they're four months old, they like to look at their hands, and then they kind of lose that and get on. You know what I mean? And so yeah. um, it's just uh, so wonderful to to raise children. Um, I know I know this is. I don't want to be. I'm sad that the Jusic, um conference i can't bring him now and um i have a friend in colorado so i might go anyway but not maybe i'll just go and hang out and bring him and not go inside you know what i mean go hang out in the hotel well yeah the it's an amazing energy when you gather that many people who have a, a spiritual purposes and spiritual calling and their own spiritual connectivity when you gather them all in one room that's an amazing energy and um or, yeah, but the SSP one, I, I should go to that in July. You should, because we're going to be there, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So, and, it, and that's where part of Florida is it in? It's down there, like Sarasota area, Sarasota, Tampa area, down there. Um, All right. So I don't know. You you Did you want to go over your photos, like, one by one? Did you um, want to, or? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so let me we go. You can go quick. Hmm? You can go kind of quick if you want. Oh, yeah, no problem. I mean, I just enjoy them. I wanted to sh- you to share anything you wanted to share about them. And I want to share them with people so they know to look out for these photos. Um, This one, what is this one? I love that one. I'm sorry, I shouldn't love my own crap. But... Yeah, you should. <laughs> okay, that's a window <laughs> and there's a Coke and an ashtray. And so it's looking mm-hmm. down and then there's this creepy building that's too big and as you know and so it's kind of my sense of dread i i started when i when i my last year of art school i came up 
with this thing about making really large buildings. Even the painting behind me is like that. Um, it's kind, it's weird, but it, it made sense to me in a way. Um, I, I knew something was off in the world and something scary was, they're trying to net us into something, you know, terrible. <laughs> but still, it's a funny painting too. It's not all, you know. It reminds negative. me of some type of video game or it reminds me of, Adventure Time. I don't know that. The cartoon, Adventure Time. I'll have to look it up. Let's see. I'll do it. Adventure Time cartoon. Adventure Time. Go tell a friend. <laughs> These guys. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, is, it, is it on this? Sure. Oh, wait a minute. Where? Okay. These guys. How do I make okay. it? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. They're cool. I like the that style. I think it must be reminding me of the Game Boy person. Okay. There's a tiny um, little I Game often Boy don't person. I used to never put people in my paintings. And now I'm doing a lot of portraits. It's funny. Yeah. I'll go to the next one. And so I share this tab instead. I love this. Okay. So Tucker Carlson. That's right after he got fired, you know, and I was so mad. But look <laughs> at what he's doing now. I'm um he's got more people listening to him than ever. It's great. And um he doesn't know everything either, but he's so funny and he's so smart. Um really love him. I mean, like he doesn't talk about the SSP. But what he does talk about is amazing, you know. I don't even know what to think about it. I, I will have to call controlled opposition on on him, you know, because I feel like we're studied and they know, like, oh, this community supports Tucker Carlson. Let me sabotage him and give him a new platform, and now I can get more followers. Like I feel like there'll always be there'll be some truth in what he says, but I just. I mean, it's I, media. I, I it's know what media. you mean. Um, he's yeah. just st sticking to mainstream um, happenings in the globally, um, yeah. rather than. And he doesn't. He acts, or uh, he's surprised at the at. Wow, these J Sixers are not getting. They're in. Um, they're not getting trial. They're being held without. Um, you know, forever without any um, oh, right. justice. Without being, yeah, without and, going through the actual I, justice. I still, system. I do trust him. I don't know why. I um, and I don't care that he doesn't talk about everything. Um, yeah. I I look. I listen to a lot of people to get more truth. <laughs> yeah. So I I like to listen to him for certain things that are happening globally because I don't pay attention enough. Um, it makes me ill. Like the whole Israel thing. Um, so you got a good filter. So you, you choose, you cast the net wide and you use a good filter. Yeah, I think. Yeah. This one right here. I noticed this thing right here. Oh, that's right behind me. Yeah. That, I was wondering. It was like the photo behind you. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, that is, I was just kind of playing with space, you know, oh. and that building is really huge and kind of ridiculous. Um, I think there's a notion of time, um, the passage of time, because like this, the part where there it's broken in the middle, um, the the blue in the white, you can see there were different. It looks to me like there were different levels, different. Oh, it's so hard to explain. So I was sort of. It's kind yeah, of about the entrance right here, right? This is an entrance. And it is almost kind like it's faded into a different dimension. Yeah. yeah different like dimension. It, yeah. Or something like really this was, time. yeah, this was here and then it was not kind of thing. Like, is it here or is it not? You know, the it, way you know things what are this always changing. Like? like Antarctica, where you yeah. can see this building on the surface, but you don't know that this bigger building is underneath. Yeah, that's what that's this too. makes me think of like Antarctica. And it's probably because of this part right the here. The white. Yeah. 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 I wonder if your 
pictures are like remote view in a way. Well, um, maybe. I mean, it's definitely uh, you. Definitely, I definitely go go inside, and and sometimes it's an accident. I'm I'm doodling, and then I just like something for some reason. And uh, hmm. I don't even know what it is, but I just. I was going to ask you because it's not a particular building inspired by any one thing. It just is something that came to you. Yeah, I did a sketch. Um, that hmm. I did when I was 20 years old, 21 years old. Wow. And that's, and that's Ileana. Oh, okay. I like this leopardy. Oh, yeah, that's like what I was telling you about the fun things you can do in. Um, procreate these uh, uh textures yeah um, this is like the screen and door. my son discovered those before i did so yeah. i was just playing with those oh and maybe that with the zigzag right there yep the charlie brown <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then we got Tony. Tony. this was a picture of a picture though right well i started it we were having breakfast and um well, actually, he was done with his breakfast. I was done with mine. I said, hey, can I, how about now? Because he had already agreed to let me draw him. And so then we sat down, and I got to chat with him for like a half an hour and while he I drew. He has the best eyes. I know. Um, and I liked how that light came. That one took forever. Can you zoom in on the one of Chris? Because the Chris. face is... And then I even made it even better than that, where that face right there. But the the face... It won't go I put any. it at the end of my okay that's no problem any further let me see yeah it's at the max for me yeah that one i could not get his likeness and that's why it's so worked on his face and in fact there's one last version that i put at the very end of the article i just put it up like a month ago or something okay so um, Sybil, so, let yeah. me ask you let me ask you a question so these people are appearing to us, you know, Chris, for example, um, you're, you're seeing him in person, but do you think that there's aspects of their aura that they have, that you're seeing a part of them that is not necessarily in front of you? Like you're seeing that other aspect. And so maybe is that something that challenges you without even realizing that you know you're in your third d body but you're seeing more of his um his higher Aura. self and the things that he's perceived and so now you're trying to pull that information onto a 3d uh portrait but you're you're seeing more than than what meets the physical eye definitely that's the magic of art when it goes through the filter of a person and um and I th and actually anyone could learn to do this, um, and you would find that you would have your own own filter. I do have uh, certain rules that I go by, honestly, even though I'm a little bit free when I paint too. But um, the, the that's what that's so amazing. The aura comes out, or say, look at if you look at a Matisse painting of light on a chair by a window or something, the you see what everyday life in a way that you know that you sometimes don't see it when you're just going throughout your day it's it's learning to see but especially portraits they do um like even my one of laura eisenhower uh, uh, that one it, it came out better than the photo itself it there's some of her aura or something yeah I, i'm just it, i i haven't met chris but just looking at chris you can see that there's um that essence of the soul is coming out in in the painting it's like um you know you you you've captured so much experience and so um when we say that somebody's an old soul we can see it in their aura but it also is evident in their in their being oh yeah there's laura um yeah so i just met her in the hallway at that Hilton and, and uh, said, Hey, can I take your picture so I can do it? <laughs> have you, have you sent these portraits on to them? Have you, have well, you shared it with them? Arkeem has his and he, 
he he put it on his Facebook. So he um, sometimes I sent Chris the final version just a little bit ago. Um, even though I finished it a long time ago, but I just never had um, sent him the fi the final. Um, I and then Tony, yes, James, Rink, yes, some people and some not. Like I don't know how to send that to Laura. I looked for her email and I couldn't find a way to contact her. I would like to. So if you guys know how to write to her, let me know later. Oh yeah. Who was the other person you just said? Oh, the Chris. You did a new one of Chris. Well, it's the same one. I just made it better. It, mm -hmm. um, it's it's a, even better than that phase right there. But it might you might not be able to. It might not look that different to you, but what oh, is yeah, go to the that's Giacometti. Um, will you go to the very end of that article? Okay, uh, go, okay, we'll talk about Giacometti first. He look at how if you look in that face, you see how much he concentrated. He'd go over and over and over, and that's what my, my teacher in Paris, one of my, one of our teachers, taught us to do was to just be relentless <laughs> and then you know, um, is, you know i was gonna say chris is also an artist i know He's, yeah he did those really yeah. he did that drawing of that really cute alien with the that looked like a a bear <laughs> I, I remember he showed us that go to the very end and you'll see the final version of chris i i just added it oh maybe it didn't show okay never mind it's all right I love this though. This is. Um, this is oh, and I wanted to say before another thing I wanted to do with writing is, um, well, I, I'm hoping all these people will write an autobiography the way Tony has and the way Kathy O'Brien. Um, those are the most powerful thing. Um, and then did some you, people did are you not. Do a portrait not, of Kathy? Did you do a portrait of Kathy O'Brien? Well, no, because she's not in the SSP, but I should. I, I'll do that. I could do that anyway. Um, uh, yeah, I'd love to, I should do that. Um, but, um, oh, and I wanted to, I was hoping that someday some kind of other artist would, would read and then kind of get woken up to like, oh my God, something wrong has been happening. Something dreadful has been happening on, on our earth. Well, you're sowing the seeds to that. You're planting yeah. seeds. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't have a lot of subs yet, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, did you, can I start talking about uh, David Strait and the- Sure. I just want to say that, okay, 1933 is when President Roosevelt, uh, FDR, that's when the Social Security Administration was, was um, created. And at that time, every, person born was given a social security number and they became U.S. citizens in all caps. And you may have, I've heard about this for years. I knew about Jordan Maxwell and stuff, but um, David Strait has explained it a lot better. The thing is in the, in the U.S. code there in, in title 18, it's a very long, I, I won't put the exact, um, you, if you watch his videos, you, you'll find it. But um, there are, we have different options. We can be a US citizen, but in that case, we're just a shade of, we're a legal fiction. We're not a flesh and blood, uh, or we can be a state national. And that way, that way we do have all our rights. And the thing is, um, he described this one case where he was helping a friend of his in a courtroom. He has won so many battles in court. Let me just say that because he knows how to play the game. And it's not about arguing your case. It's different. It's, tr it's, um, it's because it's been, it's going to be hard for me to explain it all. But um, this man, he, he went in with the constitution and the bailiff or they would confiscate it from him when he went into his hearing. And so he asked the judge at one point, why can't I carry my constitution in, into my hearing? And, the judge said, you are not party to it. And so that means that we have been stripped of all our rights unless we reclaim our status, the um, state national status. And um, 
some of it's really hard to digest and hard to believe. Um, but I, but he's proven it and he's one, one, he's won in court a whole bunch and, and two other people have gotten their, their status and then they get a different kind of passport that doesn't say U S citizen. It says, you know, Washington national or whatever. And then you have limited diplomatic immunity and then you have the rights that are talked about in the constitution and in the bill of rights. And I was thinking I was, then that was 1933. And then like a little bit later, all this space stuff happens, UFOs. And so since everybody, nobody had rights anymore, then they, then they start taking kids. I was thinking about that, that that's set up for them to be able to do that. And I was wondering if we do get our, um, you know, become a, a national. And I don't like that term sovereign citizen. I, I know there's different um, ways people do this, um, but I, you'll have rights. And I think that they, and those crazy mofos, they honor contracts. Like it's, it's I think about Randy Kramer's big thick con contracts he signed. And so I think that they wouldn't take someone who's, um, who's got their rights. You know what I mean? That's why it's exciting. And I just found this out in the last month. Um, <laughs> so. So do you believe that speaking, knowing your rights, I guess too, that's something I would ask Terry as well. And speaking your rights out loud, saying, you know, um, letting it be known that you do not consent like these things really do affect what can be done to us yeah open that um, up to you and to terry but you have to do it um you have to send like an affidavit of repudiation like and then you explain or you can find someone else, um other examples to know what you want to say and you can say because of this and this um i am not a vessel I'm not a ship. I'm a, I'm a human. I have a soul given to me by God or I am whatever. <laughs> and then you send that to the secretary of state and then you wait 21 days. And if they don't, you know, answer and they never do, then you make a judgment of non rebutted affidavit. And then you take that. Oh, and you have to send it registered mail. There's it's registered, not certified. This is crazy. Okay. This is, um, there, he, he, there's two of everything, okay? So I have my Sybil Haynes me, and then the, my fiction, which all caps. And the post office also, U.S. Post Office or U.S. Postal Service. This is nuts. But, um, but he says, yes, you have to send it registered mail. And then after all that, um, the, two, the affidavit and the judgment, then you record them at the, at the county recorder, which is, most people use Pima, Arizona. And, and then after that, you can get your passport, but you have to get your passport. You have to go to the agency because the post offices won't know how to make one for a state national, but the, the passport agency does know. Crazy, right? So I haven't done this yet, but I want to. Well, no, different people, people are approaching it in different ways. Like, uh, I know the guy that was supposed to talk about Bigfoot. He he doesn't have anything like I'm. I'm meeting a lot of people now driving. They have no driver's license. Or yeah, you don't need that. Who are um they they go through the Moorish paperwork to claim their sovereignty as well. Wow. Um, I mean, I know at one point I was thinking of doing uh doing this and getting a diplomat visa and just different things that people have said. So no, it doesn't sound crazy at all. I think I just ended up settling on using the matrix against the matrix and right. everybody has their own purpose. I think everybody's playing the game a different way. <laughs> you know, we all have a different strategy, but it's, it's as if we're converging on the same thing to kind of be a way shower that some right. people will choose your way, some will, you know, like we'll all choose a different way, but it's this way to show, show people that they have power in the matrix. It's just how you want to play the game. What do you want your strategy to be? And right. So we're just coming at it and chipping off pieces. And 
Right. It's a, um, there's so many, oh yeah. And when people talk about waking up or I woke up at this time, um, it's, there's many levels to waking up. There's, and I feel like I just woke up again, you know, learning about all this. <laughs> and, um, and so that's why it, it is, there are many ways to, to fight in the matrix, but it's good. Um, I just want to give thanks to a lady named Mickey clan that she was studying. Uh, she must've been studying David Strait a lot. Um, she and a couple girls, they, they sent these, um, they demanded proofs of the oaths of office of these um, Maricopa County um, Department School oh, Board people, right? Oh. And then they they didn't have them. And so then they sent their judgments 22 days later, just almost the same process like I just explained, except for this is this is playing offense. But this was back in 2021. And that is the reason that all the mask mandates went away and more people jumped on the bandwagon and worldwide they they went away because these people the these uh phony officials were being fined like a million dollars per person injured by wearing a mask so that's like hundreds of millions of dollars uh yeah and then they all they left they they abdicated and so that's that's why this is kind of exciting and um one and then after that, just a person can just go back to being, doing what they want to do. That's just what I think. So. There you go. Oh, oh, I'm not even sharing it. Uh oh, what happened? Share this. Oh, 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 oh! I know what I'm doing wrong. Here you go. There goes Mickey Clan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um. She's, I, I don't have time to follow everything everybody says, but she has a new podcast on um, Rumble, so mm -hmm. people can listen to her. Um, cool. So we talked about sovereignty. We talked about SSP. I, do you feel that you had a role in SSP, or do you feel no. like your role is just as a um, citizen I'm, journalist? Yeah, I'm just pissed off. I'm, <laughs> I'm outraged. I, yes. I think that there would be willing participants and um, there's a ton of money too, that these people could be paid. Not only there, there are these Sestri KV trusts that we all have and people have gotten there. So they, you have to work a bit to get through the paperwork, but so it's crazy. It's a crazy world. Um, and um, I would, I, I maybe would like to go to space someday, but not in, not under those um, conditions. Maybe how Joseph Powell went with the, with the um, Ashtar command. Supposedly, he says they um, they let him do whatever he wanted on the ship, and he, and they told him the second you want to go back, we'll take you back. You know, that that's more reasonable. Or like Jean Charles Moyen, he he had a more positive experience no torture so and elena you know she she's not she's out with people that are be benevolent not not torturing and, and all that but no i don't i wasn't i'm pretty sure i mean i i should try to do a qhht but i went to private school as a kid i mean from fourth through 12th and i went to school with some rich people and i'm wondering if any of them were involved in any of this or in any sra but not me so yeah yeah i mean the way the days drift when we're in school like you could look back and how, how do you account for a full calendar year i don't know what the memory the level of memories that you have of the days of school and there are like huge gaps that I, I'm going to tell you what I suspected at one point. Sometimes when we go watch movies in class, you know, they dim the light and then they have the thing that goes five, four. Oh, yeah. Three. And then, you know, like that could have easily been a hypnosis method while we were in school that we really don't know what we were doing in school. And I, I think about that. Yeah. Um, and some people were accessed in school, like Joseph Powell, again, third grade. 
yeah they did tests on him and um yeah so with, with school, it's, it's a mystery because we really don't really know because we spent so much time. You, you spend more waking hours at school and at work than you do at home with your family. So what I would like to say is this, that, you know, it's been awesome to be able to share your photos and to get to see your work and get some explanation behind it and what you think about it all. Um, what message would you like to send, you know, as we wrap this up to people, like what you feel is important, anything you want to say about their mission, anything you want to say about SSP and, and sovereignty? Um, what, what, um, okay. Your well, mission statement, so to speak. <laughs> I think it would be good to listen to interviews with all the people that I've drawn um, and just check out David Strait because the man has been studying for 35 years, reading a lot of really dry reading material for us um, mm. and explaining, explaining stuff. And then you see if that makes sense or not, you know, and I'm hoping the white hats are going to just flip a switch and we'll be good, but I'm, think they might be wanting more of us to um you take the pen and kind of fight back a little bit peacefully not fight really pe peacefully stand in our power with you know rebel and then, and then uh yeah like mickey clan did right with um mm -hmm. just simple letters she's they sent that's all they did and the mask mandates crumbled um Stuff like that. I think that the white hats are there and people say, well, how could, why did Lahaina happen and stuff? And, oh my God, I've got a little uh, thing that I thought of um, really quick. So President Trump's, um, his thing was make America great again, right? And so you think about the constitution and, and kind of restoring, and they say he restored the pub republic. So the, the US Inc is no longer which the, that was formed in 1871. Um, and then Biden's, it, I didn't, I just thought it was dumb when he was running Build Back Better, but it's it sinister. Was dumb. It's sinister. It means burn down and take the property and build back these uh, 15 minute cities. That's uh -huh. what they're really thinking. Isn't that just, so we can't let that happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's, a, oh. that's about it. I just hope people, you know, keep studying. And then also you got to, another part of waking up is a little bit meditative practice to, so we can raise our vibrations, even in the face of all this um, difficult stuff. Keeping so, your mind positive and focused on the end result. Yeah. To, yeah. To, to everybody focusing on that end result. Um, yeah creating a net to actually make the change, the energy required to make the change, right? And mm -hmm. so, Terry, did you want to say anything? Well, yeah, Silva, uh, Silva thank you for sharing uh, your, your process. Thank you for sharing your your pictures and, you know, the process that you have behind it. Um, it's as you say, you know, it's all up to us to investigate things and and, um, you know, be open to what we don't always see and hear, you know, like what's presented before us isn't always the truth. And so we have to be open for all that. And thank you for for sharing your your life and your process. We appreciate it. I'm sure our audience is is uh, going to check out your Substack. Awesome. I hope so. Um, thank you so much for having me. It was very exciting. My first interview. <laughs> yeah. So. And we look forward to seeing what's to come and how your, how your, uh, how your artwork develops, how your channel develops and, and your son as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing him again. I, I really have fun with the kids when we're out at the conferences and stuff. Are you going to go, think. are you going to Colorado? I'm not going to Colorado. I will okay. go to Illinois and yeah. I'll be here in Florida because I'm already here. And I do want us to begin to do things like, good night, let's just 
take over a town and, and start going and, and having fun. Like we talked about getting a bus and going from here to Canada and back, like making oh my gosh. it would be just neat if we begin to do more things where we we're just having fun, where we don't have to just sit in seats, like let's go on cruises together and just travel together and you know, guys, I don't really think that everything has to be a sit down event. I think sometimes like let's just begin to live life together. You know what I mean? I think Talk, that's, yeah. that's like the the gap between what's missing. Let's, let's, us par- let's party, Erica. Yeah. Why well, you don't never want to party with me, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> that's it i'm gonna start doing that why you don't ever want to party with me <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> hang over people's <laughs> shoulders yes looking over people's shoulders like why don't you let me take you shopping <laughs> we're making fun at puffy so so hard i want to party with me but anyway <laughs> yeah like where we really begin to not make it into a conference, but make it into like our lives. You know what I mean? And I think we started the ball rolling when we went to Daryl, um, Daryl's house for Thanksgiving. Daryl James? Yeah. And we went to Daryl's house for Thanksgiving and just like, let's just hang out and have Thanksgiving dinner. Like uh, there's like little gap missing because I think we're in, you know, we're talking to each other online or we go to conferences, but it like, we need to be integrating into living. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe we're having reunions. Yeah. Daryl is like so family awesome. reunions. He really I, is. I and a to... very tidy man, too. A very oh, really? tidy man. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. Maybe he's a Virgo. Um, I he's got to chat with him by the fire last May one night, and uh, and his story is so consistent. And he, you know, he shared other Thanks. little details just with me. <laughs> It was all, all of it corroborates. I do not think he's lying, is my point of view. Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. Um, I pulled cards while we were talking the other day, and um, it said, Speak up, speak your truth. And it was, it was him, you know, it was authentically him. It was just mind blowing, like you say, how consistent and powerful his story is. It's just like, I wish Dr. Sala would have him on. You know, sometimes he, I'm like, why don't you have this person or this person? But whatever, we'll, that's what I'm trying to do, something a little different. And, too. and us too, because there are no small fries. You know what I mean? Okay. Just, every fry tastes good in the box. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so there are no small fries. I like the little one in the corner. So I think that's All right now. <laughs> my channel is to give the voices to other people that normally maybe don't get to have the voice. Because when we go to those conferences, Man, you see so many people, they're not like gonna be the ones to come stand on stage, but man, they have amazing things to share, and that's been the goal this whole time. Yeah, but we're yeah. grateful. We got grateful with to meet you and to spend time with you, and we'll end the recording here. Okay, um, so people better, you know, watch it, watch it again, share it, like it, please put your comments and let us know what you think about the interview. So we have you know, energy to keep going. That's my, um, that's the donation is your comments. <laughs> but we know Sandy will do it. Mm-hmm. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.